Hello guys, so Ban 1.1 was just released and as usual, as with Ban, it always uh, launches with a lot of new features and a lot of uh, huge numbers. So I'm just going to go through uh, the most interesting features to me and what caught my eye as I was scrolling through this uh, release block. So the reason why this Ban 1.1 released was very hyped up was uh, because this introduces Windows support. So up to now, Ban couldn't run on Windows. So this release allows you to run Ban on Windows, although it's not uh, fully supported, but it's like 98% uh, there. So to get it on Windows, you just have to run uh, this command here. So in the Windows PowerShell, so right now if you run Ban, it's not recognized. So let's paste it and then wait for it to install it. And once it completes downloading, then we can, uh, as they say, restart your terminal editor, then run ban. So let's just open a new tab and try running ban. And just like that. So this is a huge feat, by the way. It's not easy to ship a native Windows build. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you need to fix to get things working on Windows. So this is uh, an amazing feat of engineering. So let's get that out of the way. So what I'm most interested with is uh, the macro section here. So inside our editor, let's spin up a new ban project. So you just run ban in it why another thing that's uh, really simple but i really like about bar is that the init command actually generates all the files for you so let's go back to macros so suppose i have a, a file here called uh, random.ts so this file here exports a function named random that simply returns a random number where the math.random function right and then inside our index.ts file here we say we want to call it so console.log uh, something like uh, the random number is and then we call our random function here like that right so to run this file we just do band run index.ts and then we see the output here now let's go back to the release post here so it says ban has a powerful macro system that allows you to transform your code at compile time macros can be used to generate code optimize code and even run code at runtime so with macros this piece of code here can be compiled at runtime and replaced with the output of uh, this function call and how does it work so first of all let's build this file right to get uh, maybe a bundled version of the file that you can use somewhere else so burn build we want to build the index.ts file and then the out file is a uh, say out maybe bundle.js so if we open the bundle you can see that it has uh, included the random uh, function inside here and also the file that is calling the random function so it has bundled it into one file so i want you to see how macros uh, work differently than uh, the normal bundling so if we add a width operator here and then say the type is a macro like that and then we try to build the file so this time let's save it into say macro.js let's open the macro.js file here so see the difference in uh, the bundles so let's open this down here and then here we open the bundle so you can see the difference in the files so instead of having to include the function call and then the call to the function call if we import the file file is a macro ban will run it at bundle time or at build time and then replace the output where that function was called with the actual output so this becomes just a simple console.log statement with the number that was generated when this was called so this is very useful in eliminating a lot of uh, unnecessary functions or files inside your your bundle so this was there before i didn't know about it but this was there before in ban one uh in ban 1.1 it this functionality has been extended further to even support node modules so if we import something like um, like uh, the spawn sync function from uh, the node.js child process module like that and then import it as a macro so with the type macro like that and then say we want to echo hello world so that will be the result of uh, calling the spawn sync function calling the inbuilt echo module and then the uh, arguments so we just say echo hello world and then we get the value of std out and uh, we console.log the result like that so let's see how this runs so we want to do the same ban build to output to the macro also we have an error here okay so we need to add um, the correct encoding for this uh, function so the encoding should be utf8 like that then when you try to run the file we should now have the generated macro so let's see what is in the macro this time so you can see the result here has been replaced by just the output of that string 
So the bundle won't contain the entire child process module with macros. So previously it was supporting local modules, but right now it also supports uh, external modules. Anyway, what else am I interested in here? So on the subject of macros, there is also uh, the SQLite module that uh, Burn has support for. So with Burn, you can run uh, operations on an SQLite database without having to install an external library. So for example, you can use the in-memory database, you can run statements and all those. I think uh, the main difference in Burn 1.1 is that uh, instead of uh, having to create uh, individual statements for all these, like you, you run all these three statements separately, with Burn 1.1, you can uh, run them as one um, statement. So there is something interesting with this with macros. So let's copy this and create a database that looks similar to that. So we just uh, create a new file here. Let's call it um, sadb. Then paste that code there, and then we run it. So run run db.ts, which should uh, create the tables for us. Oh, and for this demonstration, we don't need to use the in memory database. So let's uh, say save it into users.db. Right, that. Then we can test it here by selecting from it. So something like uh, result is equals to say db.query select. Uh, everything from uh, what's the database name users and then we log the output so it should be result.get i think i don't know if it's asynchronous so let's run it so ban run db.ts it will create the table run this select statement and then if you look at the sidebar here is the table that has created so for example if we add a new file here let's call it uh, let's just call it db2.ts so we can import this db file here into our file without having to import uh, this database stuff and uh, initialize the database like this so for example we can do import db from directly from uh, the users.db file by using the with operator and then setting the type to sqlite so like this ban will import uh, this database and then we get a reference to the functions that we can run on the db so for example we can run the same function we ran previously so you can do db.query select uh, from users and then log the result via the the get function like that and if we run this file so ban uh, run so it should be db db2 we get the same output uh, so this looks like it's a new feature of node not yet released but in future we'll be able to annotate imports like this to tell uh, the compiler that you're importing a json file here for example so it's not in a, an lts version of node yet but you are able to use it in ban anyway so they are called import attributes not macros so one other feature of uh, being able to import databases is you can be able to embed the databases uh, after you build the file into one executable so it will bundle your database uh, with your code so to do that we need to add the embed attribute here next to the type attribute and then use the ban build uh, compile functionality there so next to the type sqlite we add the embed true so it should be a string right so embed true and then we can run the build so it should be ban build with the compile option and then the file name so db2 like that so it will bundle that into an executable that we can run by just typing the file name like that so this is amazing stuff another thing that uh, ships with ban 1.1 is the concept of uh, trusted dependencies so by default uh, when you run uh, ban install and you want to install a package ban does not run its uh, lifecycle scripts so in npm for example when you're installing a package let's say code js right so we do npm install code js you get um, some unnecessary stuff here for example here uh, one package is looking for funding run npm fund for details like there is post install scripts that run after you install a package for example to ask for funding or to market some other thing but ban by default ignores uh, these post install scripts so if we were to do the same thing with ban so ban add code js so it will just install the package and show you the stats uh, that are useful to you and you'll notice that there's something right at the bottom here blocked one post install so ban blocks post install scripts by default so that you don't see them but if 
the package that you're installing has post install scripts that are critical to the package running, you can make it a trusted dependency. So we can run burn pm untrusted command to see the untrusted dependencies and what code was, in, uh, was blocked. So for example here, this post install uh, code was blocked. But if we want this to run because it's important, you can trust the dependency. So here they say you can run burn pm trust. So burn pm trust then we can say we trust codejs and then if you look at the package of json file here you can see that codejs has been added as a trusted dependency and uh burn actually comes with a default set of uh, trusted dependencies so for example here we can run burn pm default trusted to list all the trusted dependencies so burn pm default trusted you'll see all the trusted dependencies so most of the time this is already fixed by burn in the background so you don't need to do this manually so i think those are the three yes. three most uh, interesting features are so in the band release obviously this band release was focused on the windows support so this uh, windows build carried most of the features but uh, apart from this i just realized the macro features were the features that i was most interested about and maybe other minor uh, bug fixes that uh, i don't think are useful to go through right now so thank you so much for watching i hope i saved you some time see you in the next video